Good evening. I'm Charles Kaufman, Artistic Director of the Longfellow Chorus. 1,017 years ago, September 9th, in the year 1000, Olaf Trugvason, Viking King of Norway, suffered his defeat at the hands of the kings of Denmark and Sweden in a great sea battle as told and preserved for us in the ancient Norse sagas. Tonight on Main Stage, Edward Elgar and Henry Wadsworth Longfellow take us back to this Viking period in Norway as we hear the rarely performed late Victorian musical masterwork, Scenes from the Saga of King Olaf. The main thing to remember about the Saga of King Olaf is that, in 1859, Longfellow took an ancient Norse text and romanticized it. Then, in 1894, Elgar and his librettist, Harry Ackworth, took Longfellow's version and further romanticized it into a large-scale cantata that obscures somewhat the original narrative and changes some historical facts, but in large part remains true. It was February 25, 1859, when Henry Wadsworth Longfellow finished reading an English translation from the Icelandic of the Heimskringla, or Saga of the Norse Kings, by the medieval poet-historian Snorri Sturluson. Longfellow was captivated by Sturluson's tale of the life and adventures of Olaf Trugvason, the Viking warrior who helped convert the Norse tribes to Christianity and became Norway's king in the year 995. Longfellow published his version of the story in 1863 as The Musician's Tale, the saga of King Olaf in Tales of a Wayside Inn. Edward Elgar was 37 in 1894 and not yet a fully established composer when he began composing his musical adaptation of Longfellow's King Olaf. Teaming up with his friend and neighbor Harry Ackworth, a retired British India civil servant and amateur poet, Elgar reordered Longfellow's King Olaf text, deleted portions, added new poems by Ackworth, and altered Snorri Sturluson's original tale so that it would fit late Victorian tastes. After King Olaf was first performed in 1896 at the North Staffordshire Music Festival, Elgar stood on the verge of becoming a major composer. Elgar's King Olaf opens with Longfellow's original introduction, in which the musician of Longfellow's Tales of a Wayside Inn, Oli Bull, the Norwegian violinist and Longfellow friend, introduces King Olaf's story by calling our attention to the ancient Heimskringla, which he calls a wondrous book of Norse legends. Next, we hear the challenge of Thor, in which the Norse god of thunder calls for the Christian god to meet him in single-handed combat, gauntlet versus gospel, and how a young Christian Viking warrior named Olaf Trugvason, returning home after being set free from slavery under King Vladimir of Russia, accepts Thor's challenge. Following this, in The Conversion, a Longfellow text which Harry Ackworth has expanded upon, King Olaf forcibly converts the farmers at Nidaros, now modern-day Trondheim on Norway's west coast, to Christianity. Olaf tears down the Temple of the Norse gods and destroys Thor's icon while his men murder the farmer's leader, Ironbeard. Returning to Longfellow's original poetry, Elgar depicts the marriage of King Olaf to Ironbeard's daughter Gudrun, done as recompense for the killing of her father. On King Olaf's wedding night, Gudrun attempts to murder the king while he sleeps, but Olaf awakens and in a powerful duet, Gudrun denies her intent as Olaf refuses to believe her. The two permanently separate. Leading into our mid-program break, Longfellow takes liberties in retelling Snorri Sturluson's tale of the appearance before King Olaf of the apparition of the vanquished Norse god Odin. In Longfellow's version, Odin returns as a gray-bearded, one-eyed, storytelling ghost who spins old Norse tales while King Olaf and his guests quaff ale by the firelight in Olaf's banquet hall. After Olaf falls asleep, the mysterious guest disappears without a trace. The Longfellow Chorus and Orchestra Charles Kaufman Conductor, with Bradford Gleim as Ironbeard, Brian Ariola as King Olaf, and Deborah Selig as Gudrun, perform Introduction, The Challenge of Thor, King Olaf's Return, 
The Conversion, Good Rune, and The Wraith of Odin from Edward Elgar's Longfellow Cantata Scenes from the Saga of King Olaf. The God of Thunder. He who rides the heavens asunder. Yeah. 
And King Olaf heard the cry, saw the red light in the sky, laid his hand on his sword as he leaned upon the ring, and his ship went sailing, sailing, sailing northward, northward into Trondheim flow.
answer and say, answer and say, if the lords of your fathers ye worship today, if the gods of your fathers ye worship today, what bend ye your wills to the word of your king, to the waters of Christ and the cross that I bring, the waters of Christ. By my beard called a vial, O King shalt thou know in the name of thy people I answer thee no.
my fathers and
at the fatal midnight hour when all evil things of power in the glimmer of the moon stands to drone close against
unbidden guest to the hall, to love's feast, singing on with a strain, ancient memories wake again.
We've been listening to part one of Scenes from the Saga of King Olaf by Edward Elgar, based on Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's poem, The Saga of King Olaf, as performed by the Longfellow Chorus and Orchestra, Charles Kaufman Conductor, with Brian Ariola as King Olaf, Deborah Selig, Gudrun, and Bradford Gleim, Ironbeard. This is Main Stage on Main Public Classical, featuring a performance of Edward Elgar's Scenes from the Saga of King Olaf, with the Longfellow Chorus, Orchestra, and Soloists, Charles Kaufman, Conductor, originally presented on March 4, 2012, in the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, South Portland, Maine. You're listening to Maine Public Classical on 99.7 FM Waterville, 106.1 FM Bangor, 104.1 FM Portland, and WFYB 91.5 FM Freiburg. Also heard online at mpbn.net and on Maine Public Radio HD2 channels. WMEA Portland 90.1, WMEH Bangor 90.9, WMEM Presque Isle 106.1, WMEP Camden 90.5, WMEF Fort Kent 106.5, WMED Callis 89.7, and WMEW Waterville 91.3. Before continuing with tonight's main stage presentation by the Longfellow Chorus of Edward Elgar's cantata, Scenes from the Saga of King Olaf, we'll add a touch of authenticity by taking a moment to listen to a historic gramophone recording made in 1921 of Sir Edward Elgar conducting a portion of King Olaf with Royal Albert Hall Orchestra, an instrumental version of the chorus A Little Bird in the Air, which we will also hear the Longfellow Chorus sing later in tonight's program.
That's how Royal Albert Hall Orchestra sounded in 1921, with Edward Elgar himself conducting an instrumental version of A Little Bird in the Air from scenes from the saga of King Olaf. This from a 2011 remastered CD on the Music and Arts Program label. We continue now with part two of Edward Elgar's Longfellow cantata, Scenes from the Saga of King Olaf, as performed on March 4, 2012, by the Longfellow Chorus and Orchestra. Substituting a section of Longfellow's stanzas with a text by his poet friend, Harry Ackworth, Elgar sets the scene for a meeting between King Olaf of Norway and the Swedish queen, Sigrid the Haughty. Olaf proposes marriage to Sigrid on the condition that she convert to Christianity. But Sigrid refuses to give up her belief in the Norse gods. She tells Olaf she'd have no objection to him continuing his practice of Christianity after their marriage, but she will have no part of it. This enrages the irascible King Olaf. He strikes Sigrid on the cheek with his glove and calls her a disreputable old heathen. As Olaf storms out, Sigrid vows to take her revenge. Returning to Longfellow's text, now it is the year 1000, and Olaf finds a willing bride in Queen Tiri, who has fled her unhappy marriage to the Slavic king Borislav, giving up her dowry of land in Vinland, what is today Poland. The chorus, A Little Bird in the Air, warns the people of Trondheim of impending disaster because of the affair, and then, in a very Victorian love duet with text by Harry Ackworth, Thierry pleads with Olaf to recapture her lost land in Vinland as Olaf attempts to soothe her with sprigs of angelica blossoms. But a simple gift of flowers is no substitute for lost property, and King Olaf gathers a flotilla of warships led by his own dragon, the Long Serpent, and proceeds to Vinland. Meanwhile, Sigrid the Haughty has married the Danish king Svend and has convinced the king to ambush Olaf's flotilla at sea as retribution for Olaf's abusive treatment of her. What follows is a tremendous sea battle with text by Harry Ackworth in which the opposing Viking longships are grappled together and the warriors fight hand to hand with battle axe and spear. In Snorri Sturluson's original story, King Olaf, surrounded and defeated, leaps into the sea in order to avoid capture, holding his shield above his head, and we are left in doubt as to whether Olaf lives or dies. In the Elgar Ackworth version, however, Olaf's dragon, the longship, sinks beneath the waves, taking Olaf to his death. Elgar chooses Longfellow's concluding stanzas to end his magnificent cantata with a midnight scene at the convent in Trondheim, where the abbess Astrid hears a voice speaking the prophecy of peace over violence and love against hate. And the chorus sings the one segment of King Olaf that is still popular with choral groups today, as torrents in summer. The Longfellow Chorus and Orchestra, Charles Kaufman Conductor, with Brian Ariola tenor as King Olaf, Deborah Selig Soprano as Sigrid and Thierry, and Bradford Glime, narrator, perform the conclusion of Edward Elgar's Scenes from the Saga of King Olaf, Sigrid, Thierry, The Death of Olaf, and Epilogue. Sisters, sing ye now the song. Oh, since Olaf came a wooing, Sigrid wrought for his
went then forth, slighted teary to the north. There as Olaf's wedded day,
Gates of Drontheim knelt Astrid, the abbess, at midnight. The silence, the voice of one speaking without in the darkness. No.
We've heard part two of scenes from the saga of King Olaf, a cantata based on Longfellow by Edward Elgar as performed by the Longfellow Chorus and Orchestra, Charles Kaufman Conductor, with Brian Ariola as King Olaf, Deborah Selig as Siegfried and Thierry, and Bradford Gleim, narrator. Tonight on Main Stage, we've heard the complete Scenes from the Saga of King Olaf by Edward Elgar, presented by the Longfellow Chorus, Orchestra, and Soloists on March 4, 2012, in the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, South Portland, Maine, and a historic recording of Edward Elgar conducting the Royal Albert Hall Orchestra in an excerpt from King Olaf, A Little Bird in the Air. Thanks for joining us this evening for Main Stage. Tonight's program has been made available by the Longfellow Chorus. For more information about Main Stage on Maine Public Classical, please visit mpbn.net. For more information about the Longfellow Chorus, including links to videos of all of our past performances and radio broadcasts, please visit longfellowchorus.net.